This is Module 5 of IDIS Online Training for CDBG Grantees. In Module 5, we will learn how to provide activity level data for a public services activity that meets the limited clientele national objective. First, we will review a set of slides that discuss some key points of data entry for public services and limited clientele activities. Then we will use a case study to demonstrate the data entry process. Both the slides and the case study are available for download from the course website. If you have not already done so, you may want to download and print the materials from the course website before watching the module. If you're ready to go, let's get started. This first slide starts to list the types of public service activities eligible under CDBG. There are more on the next slide. To the left of each eligible public service is a matrix code. The matrix code is how we will indicate our activity is eligible for CDBG funds. You may have noticed that almost all of the public service matrix codes begin with 05. The one exception is O3T, which is used for the operating cost of homeless programs and programs for persons with HIV AIDS. The key point to understand when selecting a matrix code for a public service activity is HUD wants you to select the most specific matrix code available. If you are unsure of which matrix code to use, Appendix A in the course manual will give a short definition of each matrix code and some guidance. If you are still unsure which code to use, you will want to discuss your selection with your HUD CPD representative. This slide lists the rest of the public service matrix codes. HUD will occasionally add new matrix codes to accommodate the types of public service activities grantees are undertaking. For example, O5V and O5W are relatively new. Grantees are not limited to the specific public services listed here. If the grantee funds a service that is not listed, the correct choice would be O5, which is other public services. However, try to rule out using the other more specific matrix codes first. Grantees should only use O5 for a public service if no other matrix code is appropriate. This slide lists the national objectives that correspond with service activities, the most common being limited clientele, or LMC. Grantees will want to use limited clientele when, as the name implies, the benefits are limited to a particular group of persons. To meet this national objective, the grantee must document that at least 51% of the beneficiaries qualify as low moderate income. Two common examples of public service activities meeting a limited clientele national objective are youth services and homeless services. To cut down on the amount of income documentation required for public services, HUD allows the grantee to presume certain public services will meet the national objective if they limit the service to a certain population, such as elderly people. This is called a presumed benefit. We will discuss this further on the next slide. If the service will benefit all of the residents of an area and that area is primarily residential and low mod income, the low mod area national objective may be used. For example, a crime prevention program that targets a specific low income neighborhood would qualify under low mod area or LMA. For more information on low mod area, refer to module four. The low mod housing and low mod jobs and slum blight area national objectives are also possible for some public services, but they're not common. Our focus in this module will be on limited clientele activities. Here we have a list of all of the presumed benefit categories. As mentioned on the previous slide, HUD allows grantees to automatically meet the limited clientele national objective when they serve one of the presumed benefit populations, including abused children, battered spouses, severely disabled adults, homeless persons, illiterate adults, persons with AIDS, migrant farm workers, and elderly persons, who by HUD definition are 62 and older. Even though grantees do not need to collect income data for these populations, they still need to input income data into IDIS. To account for this, HUD has developed the following assumptions for each presumed benefit population. For example, if you carry out a homeless program and serve 100 persons, you would report all 100 persons as extremely low income in IDIS. A common mistake by grantees is to report everyone under presumed benefit as moderate income. Instead, use the income levels on this chart. Here are some key points to keep in mind when entering data for a public service activity in IDIS. First, use the most specific matrix code. You only want to use the generic O5 as a last resort. 
When reporting on beneficiaries, do not report everyone as moderate income. This misrepresents the actual impact of the CDBG program and reports submitted to Congress and other government bodies. If a service is carried out for more than one program year, make sure to report beneficiaries in the correct program year. To do this, the grantee can insert a new program year on the CDBG Accomplishment detail screen. We will see how this is done in the data entry portion of this module. When reporting beneficiaries, try to report unduplicated persons served. For example, if you provide counseling to a homeless person once a month for 12 months, you would report this person once instead of 12 times. Here we have a list of the screens we will need to complete when adding and completing a public service activity. To add a service activity that will meet the limited clientele national objective, we need to complete three screens. If you want to follow along in your manual, refer to Chapter 3, Activity Setup. To update or complete a limited clientele activity, we will need to complete two screens of data under CDBG Accomplishment Detail. The information you need to provide on page 2 will vary based on the type of service activity you are updating. Chapter 10 of your manual does a good job of explaining what data is required for each type of public service. For the data entry portion of this module, we will be using Case Study 4. Take a moment and read through the Case Study 4 and try to answer the discussion questions. When you are done, log into the UAT version of IDIS and follow along. The best way to learn IDIS is to get hands-on practice.